Well, I think it's partly uh, the, the fact that there's a tradition here, as it were. Uh, Vladimir Putin came in very soon after uh, taking the presidency again, coming here to, uh, to China. It's also something that Chinese leaders are speaking about a great deal through state media, saying that they want to go to Russia uh, to uh, push the relationship. They call it a very strategic relationship. Uh, uh, bilateral ties are somewhat around $80 billion. They want to move that to $100 billion in uh, years to come. And Natalie, there's also a sense that they want to push both the domestic agenda and the foreign policy agenda. As a voting bloc uh, that often happens in the Security Council, China and Russia are a very powerful group. Uh, but it's also just a way to for, you know, further strengthen those ties that have been warming up in recent years between China and Russia. So, yes, very significant that this is the first trip for Xi Jinping. And uh, they, they both probably have economic concerns in their business dealings with one another. Uh, who needs whom the most economically? Any way to answer that? Well, uh, definitely they need each other in that uh, Russia produces a lot of natural gas, a lot of oil, and China consumes it. That's uh, effectively the way the business relationship works. Now, Chinese officials are saying that they're hoping that pen will be put to paper on a major gas deal. On the Russian side, through state media and others, they're less uh, confident that that deal will come through. But certainly the Russians worry that this relationship will become more unequal over time. You know, Russia's own economy has stagnated somewhat, uh, not having the robust growth you've seen in China. Uh, so maintaining the equilibrium of that relationship is important for both sides. But just maintaining a block in foreign policy and in domestic issues that could counteract uh, Western interests is very important for both China and Russia. All right, David McKenzie for us out of Beijing. we following up the trip for us and reporting back. David, thank you. Well, to Syria now, where a suicide bomber attacked one of the main mosques in Damascus. At least 42 people were killed, 84 wounded. The government and rebels trading blame. Among the dead, a top Sunni cleric, Mohammed Saeed Ramadan al Buti, was hated among rebels for his support of the al-Assad government. He's been described as the head of the Levant Scholars Union, uh, who had come out on Friday prayers, uh, preaching sermons in support of the Syrian government, uh, saying that it was fighting against evil and that some uh, parts of the Muslim world had in fact joined uh, what he described as an evil movement against the Syrian government. Significant because he was a Sunni Muslim scholar uh, speaking out against an uprising, a rebellion that has largely been led by members of the Sunni Muslim majority. Well, the UN plans to take a close look at accusations by the Syrian regime and the rebels that the other side used chemical weapons.